which is practically an epidemic here in the New York area. Almost 30% of the kids are, are on or close to being obese. So we think this is a great way to kind of come together. Um, we think this is the model for the future, sort of business getting together to pick up some of the slack that the public sector can't pick up anymore and step in and fulfill the needs. Step in. You yeah. know, and I, you and Mike Barnacle have something in common, right? You, I don't know, but you both have like 94 children between you two, right? We have seven. You have nine, nine kids? Nine. Wow. Nine kids? Do you really? Yeah. Yeah. Nine yeah. kids! I have, I, have every, I have every future demographic that will yeah. <laughs> so be in the next 50 oh, years. Oh, wow. Yeah, one of the things that uh, you've chosen five cities for this program, uh, this joint program, and one of the things that is really, and we've talked about it before, that, that is really sad when you think about it. We used to call it gym class mm -hmm. you know, when I was growing up, and then it graduated into physical education, but the, none of that exists in, t in so many schools across the country. So does this help fill a void? Does this program help fill a void for those kids who receive no exercise at all or no instruction at all? Absolutely. So they have no access to sports. We're focusing on cities um, in underserved challenge areas where alternatives might be gang, might be drugs. So here we step in and just provide an opportunity to get kids in the game, in whatever that game might be. So here just in New York, we've got we've got tennis, we've got rowing, we've got wrestling, we've got ping pong, we've got soccer, uh, rugby. So it, it doesn't matter what the sport is, it's about getting involved, getting active, and having an alternative to hanging around and, and potentially getting in trouble. Yeah. It's a complete lifestyle that you want to develop in the next generation. Generation. And I wonder, Mark, if I sat down on the set and he said, <clears throat> hey, those almonds shouldn't have all that stuff on it. So obviously you're health conscious. It must be incredible, though, looking at today. I, I get so worried looking at the next generation at this point because physical fitness, it does not even seem to be possible for some of them. Well, I think that, you know, the biggest point that is made here is, is that all the money is actually left some of those programs at the public school sector. You know, Laureus, I was involved with the inception of this, this whole concept back in uh, 2000, and uh, I'm one of the board members, and what, what we've done globally and what we're so proud of the fact that Mercedes has come in and supported our programs is that we have about 40... Uh, we, we have over 102 programs, uh, 104 now I believe it is, worldwide. We affect the lives of over a million people over the last 12 years that have gone through these programs where they never had a chance to ex exhibit any opportunity. They're, they're, they're socially, economically, and spiritually challenged, and we've given these people opportunities with the programs that we've implemented uh, financially. What we've done here in America, uh, and especially in this region here, is we have Coach Across America, which we have, I think, 250 programs nationwide, um, and that we support financially the education of the instructors, mm. because we can create the program, right. but we need also the modeling of the people that are the spiritual leaders and the mo role models of when these kids come into the program that they can actually identify with these people. So I've been involved with this for over 12 years now, and I mean, it's sort of like this is what I do to give it the office. You know, when somebody says, Will you donate your time? Well, there's about 46 of us luminaries in sport that cover from cricket to Olympic sports to professional sports. They give up our time to go to these different projects, at least with Laureus worldwide. And now what we're doing is we're gaining more momentum in the United States through Coach uh, Across America and its 250 programs. What do we do, Mark, in, in schools, though? I know a lot of it is, is budget, but to reverse this sort of the de-emphasizing of gym class. They don't, a lot of these schools don't even do the, um, the presidential fitness test anymore. They well, phase this out, and this is obviously core not just to our kids, but to the future of the country. Well, it, it's sort of like when you starve your system financially, you've got to get to, well, at least maintaining your life. So it's the same as when you get sick. You know, your body starts to shut down except for the essential parts. And one of the things that gets cut off is these extra activities. At one time it was the arts, and, and now it's now sport. Um, and, and then pretty soon it's going to be just education in itself. I mean, I don't even know where they're going to go with this. But um, the problem is, is that sports gives a child an opportunity to express themselves in a social way amongst themselves and feel good about themselves building self-esteem. And one of the reasons that the gang members actually get control of these kids when they don't have athletic programs is they bring them into an environment where they feel they're a part of a program, but it's a bad environment. Sports basically eliminates that and creates a healthy environment. And where there's despair, it gives hope. Sports does that in a, in, a, in a kind of an interesting way. So our programs are not designed to develop Olympic 
Olympic athletes or world champions. It's basically to give a, a child an opportunity to have something else that maybe they're not so great academically, but they can express themselves through sports in a real positive way. Fantastic. Steve, we can't let you get out of here without one last yeah. pitch to get me a deal. That's for Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Here it comes. On an SUV. But, but, no, yeah. Yeah. all those kids you probably yeah. support. Yeah, he needs a train. Yeah. Yeah. It's, no, the fact that Mercedes, I mean, a lot of people look at, you know, BMW or Mercedes and, and I want to buy an American car. But the efforts that you've made to build cars in the United States, you've got a, a, a plant in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. We do. Yeah. You're going to expand that plant. How did you arrive at Tuscaloosa, and why are you still there, and is it going to grow? Um, wow, this goes back to 94 when we decided to, uh, to locate our first plant outside of Germany in the United States, get closer to the market. Um, hedge some currency risk, so so uh, we needed more exposure to dollar territories. Uh, so we we landed on Tuscaloosa after a pretty exhaustive search, uh, and you know after the fact, you know, 15 years later, we, we've got Hyundai there, we've got Toyota there. It's, so it sparked off a whole uh, movement where there's a whole pull of, of, of automobile industry down there in the south, um, surrounded by suppliers. It's responsible.